Hey everybody, welcome to Dan Bowen Photography. This is part two of my Film 101 series where I outline some basic things about film photography for beginners. Uh, the last video I did was about what camera you should buy if you're a beginner. And in this video I'm going to talk about film. So a lot of people have asked me recently what kind of film I shoot and where to get a process, where to buy the film. So I'm going to go over a couple of options and uh, talk about where I buy my film and where you can buy film, and then also where you can get it developed. So I shoot mostly uh, color negative and color slide film, and basically color negative film will give you something that looks like this, a negative, obviously, and color slide film where is it? Left in the other room. Uh, color slide film gives you these uh, slides, which gives you a positive image. Um, so basically, I would say color negative is probably the more common um, film if you want to shoot color film. There's also a lot of black and white film out there, but I personally don't shoot black and white all that often. Um, but there are tons of options for black and white film if you're interested in that as well. Um, so if you're looking to buy film, I would say the two biggest manufacturers of film today are Kodak and Fujifilm. You can pretty much find Kodak and Fujifilm films pretty much everywhere. You can find them in pharmacies, you can find them at camera stores, you can find them on online retailers like Amazon or B&H, and they carry a lot of stock. And there are a lot of different um, types of films that they sell. There are some smaller brands. I know Ilford is really big for black and white photography, uh, black and white film. I think they only sell black and white film and then some other products on the side, but in terms of film, they only sell black and white. And then there are some other smaller brands as well. Uh, Lamography sells film, but I don't think they manufacture it. I think it's rebranded. And, whew, I don't know, Cinestill, there's a, there's a ton of them. Um, but my main go-to is Kodak Portra 400, and this stuff costs about $8 a roll. Uh, you can buy it pretty much anywhere. Um, it also comes in a 160 ISO film, which is a little bit cheaper. Um, another film I like to use is uh, Kodak Ektar 100, and Kodak Ektar 100 is it's a really saturated film, so colors look really... Um, I don't want to say overblown, they're really saturated, it's whereas Kodak Portrait 400 is a bit more, the color palette is a little more muted, I would say, or normal looking. Um, and then in terms of slide film, I shoot a brand called um, Fujifilm Provia 100. And all these films are very easily available. Um, I buy film often from the filmphotographyproject.com. Um, it's just a group of guys and women who uh, are really dedicated to film. They run a podcast and the proceeds from the uh, film and other products they sell in the store go to support uh, continuing to produce the podcast and other um, information about film. So I like them because they're kind of the little guy and they carry a lot of different films. They also sell like expired films and other like experimental things. If you're interested in that, I would check out the filmphotographyproject.com. Um, other than that, I would usually buy film on bhphotovideo.com and that's B&H. Um, I also buy it from Amazon. Uh, there are a bunch of other online retailers. I would say probably Adorama sells film. I don't know. Um, you can also buy batches of film on eBay, but I would rather go and buy fresh film from um, a place like the Film Photography Project or otherwise. Uh, you can also get film in pharmacies and grocery stores in some cases still, um, but a lot of the stuff they sell there is it's fairly cheap quality, I would say, but it's also cheap price, so if you're just looking to pick up a couple rolls to try, um, a lot of places sell Kodak Gold, that's a consumer film. Uh, Fuji Superior or Fuji Color, um, those are also pretty cheap films as well. Also, Lomography sells um, Lomo Color, is comes in like a three pack for like ten dollars, so it's also a really cheap film. You can pretty much get any of it processed anywhere. Which brings me to the second point, which is where to get your film developed. So, there are kits out there where you can develop your film at home, um, but this isn't something that I've tried out or really 
had a ton of interest in, at least lately, and if you're just getting into film photography, I wouldn't dive right into developing your own film, unless that's something you really, really want to do. Uh, I wouldn't discourage it in that case. Uh, but I often get my film developed at a professional lab, and there are a bunch of them over <laughs> across the country. A lot of them take mail orders, so you can mail your film there. Um, for most of my film processing, I use a local lab here in Boston called Color Tech, and I'll put a link uh, for them down below. Um, and I also will occasionally send my film out to the dark room in California because they've been really satisfied with the results. Um, but there are a bunch of other film labs. I think if you just go to Google, you can probably find one in your local area. I would recommend the professional labs over um, something like a pharmacy because a lot of the pharmacies now uh, throw away your negatives after they develop the film, which I think is crazy, but um, you know, that's that's me and I just really wouldn't want to go that route. Um, and if you're worried about like scanning your film, uh, I'm gonna do another video on scanning and color correcting later. Um, but if you're worrying about scanning your film, a lot of the labs will do scans for you for a little bit of an extra fee. And I think that that's worth it in the beginning just to get some digital copies of your images so that you can see how they turned out and you know share them online and stuff like that. Um, so I think that that's a good option is to look for a professional lab that's, you know, if there's one near you, that's great. Um, I use ColorTech because, you know, they finish my film in a day, I can pick it up the next day. They're on my way home from work, so it's really easy for me to get there. <laughs> and for some other stuff, uh, sometimes I'll send it up to the dark room because their prices are better and they also do a good job with um, scanning and color slide film in particular. So I usually send color slide film there because my local lab uh, doesn't do it in-house. So yeah, that's pretty much it. So just to give you an overview, here's my recommended workflow for someone just getting into photography or getting into film photography for the first time and really wants to get their feet in and try it out uh, without spending a ton of money. I'd recommend getting a cheap 35mm SLR camera, preferably one that is fully manual uh, because you'll be able to learn a lot on those cameras. Uh, they're fairly simple to use. They don't have a lot of bells and whistles. You don't have to worry about batteries or mechanical, or not mechanical, electronic things failing on you. And they're really solid and durable cameras. So I recommend getting a 35mm SLR, buying some film um, either from a local store or online. Um, don't buy a ton, I guess. Maybe buy a couple different ones to try out. And then send your film off to either a local lab or a lab that takes mail orders and get some scans. And just go from there, you know, test it out, trial and error. And I think you'll have a lot of fun with it. Um, I have some friends who are like just about ready to dip their feet in and get into film photography. And I've just been trying to push more and more people into trying film. Um, I did a video a couple weeks ago about my first year of shooting film and how much fun it's been for me, and I recommend it to anybody who's looking to get into it. So what film labs do you like to get your film developed at? Leave a comment down below and let me know. I'm always interested in learning about new labs that are out there and other places that I might consider sending my film. Um, as always, if you like these videos, please subscribe to my channel by clicking on the red box next to my head or by clicking on the subscribe link down next to my name. Also, please follow me on Instagram. My handle is at Dan Bullman, and I post a lot of the photography that I've been making recently, and it's more updated than probably any of my other social media platforms in terms of putting out new content. So uh, check me out on Instagram. All right, guys, we'll see you soon. This has been another episode of Dan Bullman Photography. Peace.